morning, kids. It's good to see you. Do you know what I'm holding here? Have you ever seen these before? A the They're the 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 boost the batteries. They boost the batteries, that's right. They're called, they're, they're like a charger, they're called jumper cables, right? Now, I bought these jumper cables from a place that ranks their products, and they do it this way. They say, this is good, this is better, but this one is best. Good, better, best. And they have three choices. And so you could buy some of these kind of jumper cables that say good, it, it, that'll work for you. It may not last a long time, but it'll get you through in a pinch. Uh, it's, it'll, it's about the lowest you can expect, right? And then sometimes you can get one that's a little bit, I think this is actually my uh, better. <laughs> I didn't get the, the, the deluxe, but I got this one, which is better. It's maybe a little thicker, a little stronger, a little more be better made, and so it's called better. But there's even one that's like really deluxe, well-made, really super duty, last a long time, and that is the best. best. But they're expensive, so you don't buy them. Aha, uh -huh. did you get that? There's a cost, right? There's a switch. I mean, we would all like to have the best, wouldn't we? But sometimes you have to kind of weigh that and say, well, how much can I afford and things too. You know, it's kind of like cheeseburgers when you're going to get your cheeseburger. Mm -hmm. I don't know much, how much money you got, Lucas, but getting a hamburger is great, right? It's, it's good or great. But if you have cheese on it, it's better, it's greater. And if you put bacon on it, oh. now it's the best. Now it's the greatest. Am I, talk yes. yeah, am I talking your language now? Yes. That's right. What about God? Is God good, better, best? No. Is God great, greater, greatest? He's the greatest. He's, the, he's greatest. the greatest? Can I say something that might sound sound strange? When we say God is great, we, we're saying that he is not only the greatest, but he is the only one. He's unique. He is so far above the bestest. He is so far greater than the greatest that he's all by himself. God is great means that God is the greatest, that he is unique, that nobody is like him. You can't compare God to somebody else. Some people will say, uh, and even people have talked about God in the Old Testament saying, uh, uh, God, your God is the greatest, or your God is greater than all other gods, which is kind of silly to say, because there's only one God. He's the only one. We're not comparing him to anything else. And he's the only one that can do what God does. Well, I wrote something on this piece of paper here. Do you see what it says? Jesus is great. Jesus is great. I want you to think of when I say that Jesus is great the same way when I say God is great. He's the only one. He's not just good. He's not better, you know. He's, he's the best. He's the greatest. He's uniquely qualified to do what Jesus offers us. He's the one who died on the cross and took away our sins. There's no other. Only Jesus can do that. So when we say Jesus is great, we're saying he is the greatest. He is the one that's above everybody else. And nothing we can do can change that, right? You might want to say, well, I want to say Jesus is great. I want to say Jesus is greater. How can I say that in a better way? How can I say it in a way that would really get people's attention? And, 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 and I'll just try and say this differently. Can I do that? Can I do that? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 In a different way, let's see what it says. What does it say? Jesus is great. It says Jesus is great. He's the only one. He's the only one. I can't say it any better than that. All righty.
Let's pray, kids. Lord, you are great. God, Abba, Father, you are great. We say that knowing there is no other. You are in complete control. You love us. You died for us. Help us to live lives worthy of that kind of sacrifice, that kind of love. Help us to live like you. Bless these children and let them go forth and tell everybody that Jesus is great. Amen. Okay. Our Heavenly Father is the good, good Father. The Lord's Prayer is well known and an important prayer for believers. We usually pray the prayer together for Sunday worship service and often at the end of our church meetings. The first line goes like this, Our Father who art in heaven. Who is our Father in heaven? Who is the God we call our Father in heaven? In fact, the Bible never attempts to prove the existence of God. Rather, it assumes he, his existence from the very beginning in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. And what the Bible does is reveal the nature and character and work of God. Our Father in heaven reminds us whom we pray to, whom we talk to. We don't pray to an unknown God or image or to our conscious. We call the God Heavenly Father. And in the Old Testament, people refer God as Elohim or Jehovah. But in the New Testament, Jesus refers to God as a Heavenly Father. So how much do you know about our Father in Heaven? How much do you know your Heavenly Father? Let us read the nature of God that you will find the bulletin insert. Nature of God. Our Father is infinite, incomparable, and unchanging. God exists everywhere, knows everything, and has all power and authority. And let's read the characteristics of God together. God, God is, is just, just loving, loving, truthful, and, and holy. God shows compassion, mercy, and grace. God judges sin, but also offers forgiveness. Is this God whom you and I love and serve? We say our Father in heaven, but usually, often, we are talking to a different God that controls us, that controls our direct directions, and we want to please the God, that different God is I and myself. A pastor said, a selfish heart is a heart that only cares about the Holy Trinity, that is me, myself, and I. We trust our own judgment. We trust our own knowledge and feelings and ability. And we judge right and wrong based on what I like or what I know. A businessman, his name is John, from California, became a pastor. One day God talked to him and said, John, you have two masters. And John replied, oh no, I, I have only, I serve only one God, is you. And God said, the other God is you. 
You say you love me, and you say you are my Lord, but you do what you like. You don't do what I like. Then he, he realized that he said and did many things according to his wisdom and his wishes, his knowledge, and his power. And then asked God to bless me, bless my ministry, and bless my family. So John wrote down, wrote down and, uh, that he needed to surrender to God. And there were 300 items on the list. Since that day, John's prayer has been, Lord, I surrender and repent of my wishes and my desire, and I surrender, repent of my ego and pride, and my ambitions and fear and worry and sickness and doubt and unbelief and so on. And he said, Lord, help me, less of me and more of you in me and in my life. Then he realized, he experienced the tremendous of changes, his ministry and his marriage and his family life. If we know who God is and believe in him, we must obey and follow him even in situations that we may not fully understand or we don't like or even have no, even have to pay the cost. In other words, unconditional surrender is what God wants from us. Do you remember? We often weakly prayed, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Who is your Lord, Jesus or yourself? There might be many gods in the world, and I understand in India they have three millions of gods. And the people pray to about, but there we pray for special to our God, that we call him our Heavenly Father. That implies God invites us into a loving relationship. Have you heard the non-Christians call their God as a Heavenly Father? Let us read Romans chapter 8, verse 15 together. So, so you have, have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father. Since God is our Heavenly Father, He teaches His children, guides His children, loves His children. And when His children go astray, He disciplines them and leads them in the right path. Our Heavenly Father provides a need for His children, holds their hands, and reveals Himself to them. As GPS helps us to get to the place where we wanted to go, our God is our GPS. Let us read Proverbs chapter 3 together. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. This gives us comfort and encouragement in times of uncertainty, personally and as a church and as a denomination and as a nation. When we cannot see the obstacles or it seems there is no way, no way out in the way, God does see and God does know. And God wants us 
to and will direct our path if we let him, if we let him. To receive God's guidance, we must acknowledge God in all we do, and we must surrender our plan and our will. There are three conditions in today's text that determines his guidance. Number one is, in all your ways, acknowledge him in verse 5 we just read. This means not only when you want, but on every step of your journey, daytime, light, nighttime, at work, at play, at school, in everything you do, you must acknowledge God. Number two, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Often we only turn to him when there is no way to turn. Or after we try to do everything we can by ourselves. But God wants you to make him your first resources before turning to anyone else or even before you try to do anything. And then lastly, lean not onto your own understanding. It means you should not depend on yourself or your own wisdom, but depends on God by accepting the fact that without God, you alone are not enough to fulfill God's plans. Let us read Isaiah 55 together. My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Praise God. His thought is different than I. There was a mountain climber a Peter who wanted to climb the highest mountain. And after many years of preparation, he decided to climb the mountain alone because he wanted the glory just for himself. The night felt heavy in the heights of the mountain, and Peter could not see anything. All was black, a zero visibility. Only a few feet away from the top of the mountain, Peter slipped and fell into the air, falling at great speed. He kept falling with great fear. He was thinking about how close death was getting, and certainly he felt the rope tied to his waist pull him very hard. His body was hanging in the air, and only the rope was holding him. And in that moment, he had no choice but to scream, help me, Lord, help me, God. All of a sudden, a deep voice coming from the sky and answered, what do you want me to do? And Peter answered, save me, God. And God said, do you really think I can save you? Of course I believe, Peter replied. And then God said, then cut the rope tied to your waist. There was a moment of silence. And the man decided to hold on to the rope with all his strength. The rescue team tells uh, that the next day, Peter was found dead and frozen, his body hanging from a rope, his hands holding tight to it, only 10 feet away from the ground. How about you? 
How attached are you to your rope? It might be your job, it's your possession, your pride, your judgment, your plan, your fear, your hurt. Unforgiveness? Will you let go? Don't ever doubt the things from God who you call our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven distinguishes from our earthly Father, biological Father, stepfather, Godfather. The earthly father are not perfect, but our heavenly father is perfect. Our earthly fathers may abuse us in different ways, but never our heavenly father. Our earthly father may not keep their promises, but our heavenly father keeps his promises. Our earthly father may not forgive us, but our heavenly father forgives us when we repent sincerely. An earthly father cannot be with us forever, but our heavenly father is with us forever. Earthly fathers may run out of patience, but our heavenly father is infinite patient, infinitely patient. Earthly fathers may find it hard to accept you as who you are and what you are, but our Heavenly Father accepts you as who you are and what you are. Our earthly fathers are human and will tell you that you are number three or number four. But our Heavenly Father will tell you that you are always number one to Him. Praise God. Christians are not sinless. Christians are not perfect. Christians continue to struggle with the sin, even fall, but in the midst of weakness, God is working, God is teaching and disciplining and bring maturity and holiness. But in this journey, we must trust in God, the who is our good, good Father, who is perfect, who is all-knowing, and who is all-powerful. Our Father in heaven is holy and just. He knows what he's doing. He is the only one who has the final word to judge, even in the situations we do not understand nor make sense. Do you know our Heavenly Father in heaven? Do you know him? And do you believe in him? Do you let him be your Lord? We will have a Holy Communion, and I invite you to have time with your Father in heaven and respond to the some questions. The questions are, is our Father in heaven is really in charge of everything in your life? in your children, in your family, your dreams and plans and a fear or pain and all of what you have to do. Let us a time, ha have a time to examine ourselves if we have two masters, is God and I. Is there anything that God wants you to surrender so that he can fulfill his glorious plan for you? Do you trust God 
and acknowledge him in all your ways? Or do you hold tight to your own rope, whatever it might be? I pray that your communion, Holy Communion time, will be a sacred time for you today. Hear God's voice and you speak to him. Go forth in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the commu communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.